It's Mike Canny again, and we're back with another case study, or rather the same case study that we saw in the previous video, but this time we're going to troubleshoot this performance issue using Wireshark. So kind of as a refresher, getting back to the document here, we see we have a client that is going out to google.com, right? So they're pulling back a, a web page from Google and they were reporting that the quote unquote internet was slow, right? So what we did is we grabbed a trace file using Wireshark at the client's browser as well as using uh, a TCP dump that was inherent on the firewall. We brought the traces back and now we're gonna look at these in Wireshark as opposed to the automatic way with net data. So what you can see we've got now is I've, I've loaded up both the traces, both the one from the client side as well as the external one uh, out on the outside interface of the firewall. And how we'll start here is we'll take a look at the, the client side and, and per the name of the trace file, uh, we know that this is filtered, right? So one of the things that we can see here is we're uh, going out doing a get to at, at google.com for this PNG file and then a series of, of retransmissions. Now one of the things I've added into my uh, window here is a delta column, right? So I can see that the delta in between packets, uh, how long the delays were between those retransmissions and the overall uh, total delay. So by the time that the client got the 304 back it was 20.38 seconds, right? So the user was sitting here uh, 14 milliseconds into that transaction. The get left, didn't get a response back uh, till 20 seconds later. Now, one of the things that we wanna do is we wanna understand what happened to that packet as it left the, the client's workstation and arrived at that firewall. So what we wanna do is we wanna be able to filter out this exact conversation uh, that happened on the front end on the back end. And the way that we do that is specifically for this type of firewall, understanding what gets passed from the front end to the back end. And, and specifically in this case, uh, the TCP sequence number, as well as the IP identifier gets passed. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go into Wireshark here and I'm gonna uh, create a display filter first on the sequence number, right? So. Uh, you might be looking at this and saying, oh my gosh, okay, it's got a, a sequence number of zero. Well, we know that isn't possible. And of course, what this is, is Wireshark will, for convenience sake, uh, allow you to display relative sequence numbers. So what I wanna see is the actual sequence numbers, not the relative sequence numbers. So what I'll do here is I'll, I'll right click on this. I'll go to protocol preferences and I'll come in here and I'll select or, or turn off uh, the relative sequence numbers by simply just clicking on this checkbox. And now I can see what that actual sequence number is. So this is the real TCP sequence number that was on the wire, on the wire which in this case was 2499. So to be able to follow this transaction on the back end, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna say prepare this as a filter selected. Now what that did, as you can see up here in my, in my filter bar window, is I actually put in the actual tcp.seq equals equals and then the sequence number. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna come over to that backend trace file and I'm gonna come in and paste that as a display filter. Now, as I come in and look at this, make this window a little bit bigger so that you can see it, and I click on apply for that filter, I don't see anything, right? So this is, this is kind of, this is, this is good news, bad news, right? So why didn't I see anything? Well, probably, and I'm guessing here, is that I have relative sequence numbers still turned on in this trace. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out, I'm gonna grab any one of these packets, go into the, the TCP, just pick a specific port, and then check to see if this is indeed the case by looking at protocol preferences. And yes, I do have relative sequence numbers still turned on. So now uh, I've got the actual sequence numbers. I'll apply my filter again and click go. And lo and behold, I found that same initial sequence 
on the back end. Now, an easy way to filter out or to, to get that entire conversation is simply be by right-clicking on this and selecting conversation filter TCP. Now, I've actually got the front end conversation married to the back end conversation. Now, one of the interesting things here as well, as you can see my, my time clocks are all off. So one of the things that I want to do here is right click on this. Actually, in this case, I'm going to come in and set a time reference. And you can see that that reference clock is set to zero. And since in my other trace I was already set to zero, I can then line these captures back up and take a look at what happened where those specific packets were. Now, one of the things that we notice here on the back end is we see the connection setup occur, and then we don't see this get until 20 seconds later. So one of the things I may want to understand about that is which one of these gets equals this get over here, right? We can see we've got eight of these due to the retransmissions. And so one of the things I can do is I can come in and I can look at the IP header information. And I'm looking specifically for the IP identifier, right? So in this case, it's 3776. Now, one of the really uh, fast ways to do this is to simply right click on this and say, apply this as a column. So now I've got my IP identifier set. And I'm, what I did over here, I'm going to also do in this specific trace file. So I'll come in and I'll look at any one of these different fields. I'll click on identification. And I'll say, apply this as a column. So now I can look to see where this packet 3776 actually left. Now when I switch back to the client front end trace, I come over here and I look at the IP identifiers 3776. Lo and behold it is the first packet that was sent that sat in that firewall queue for 20.304 seconds. So again a little bit more complicated doing it with Wireshark, but certainly possible. Um, I just kind of wanted to show the, uh, what I, I guess what I call the manual process of doing this troubleshooting um, versus uh, what we saw in the last video with NetData. So again, thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time.